Combustion is another kind of reaction, and that means reacting with oxygen. Reaction of a substance with O2 to form one or more oxygen-containing product compounds, often including water. That's what a combustion reaction is. They are usually exothermic. They release heat. And compounds containing carbon and hydrogen or carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen always form carbon dioxide and water when you burn them. And so burning, combustion um, mean the same thing. So here's an example that you can see right here. C2H6, that is a hydrocarbon. It contains carbon and hydrogen. You react it with the oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water is the product. And this isn't the only combustion reaction, but this is super important because um, burning hydrocarbons or fossil fuels supplies about 80% of the energy in the U.S. Uh, this includes coal and oil to produce electricity, gasoline for our cars, natural gas, propane to heat and cook, and more. So it's a really important reaction in, in producing energy. So we use the heat emitted by this reaction. I'm going to say plus heat here because it releases a lot of heat. And you all know that because you've burned stuff and you know it gives off heat. That heat can be used to heat up steam, which the pressure of the steam can create electricity by turning a turbine and moving a magnet. And so that process produces electricity. Or the pressure in, uh, that builds up in the pistons of your car creates the motion of your car. So we use this reaction to take that heat energy and convert it to other forms of energy that we use in our society. So some of the downsides is uh, that carbon dioxide is called a greenhouse gas. And so it may contribute to heating up the planet or changing the climate. So carbon dioxide and water actually, uh, what they do is they let the heat from the sun in but the heat that radiates back out is at a longer wavelength, if you remember that um, spectrum of the energies, and the heat that comes off, um, it, it holds it in. And so it acts like a blanket holding in the sun's heat, which is important. I mean, we need that heat so that we don't freeze at night. But if we increase that, we may change the climate in our planet. And so that's a concern. The other thing is, besides the greenhouse gases, that these fossil fuels often come with other um, elements like sulfur that produce acid rain and other types of pollution, the particulates that form. And so it's not the cleanest way of form producing energy. So, so there's some downsides to it, but we use it a lot. And so it's important to understand this reaction and what's going on. Let's look at another one. Here's an example, C6H12O6 plus oxygen. Now we know what the products are because always it's going to be, we start with a hydrocarbon, it's going to be carbon dioxide and water. So CO2 plus H2O. Those are our products. Okay? And so let's balance this as well. All right, we have six carbons. Um, one over here, so let's put a 6 in front of that. We have 12 hydrogens and 2 here, so let's put a 6 in front of this. And now let's count up our oxygens. Over here we have 6 times 2, that's 12, plus 6 more. We have 18 oxygens on this side. Over here we have 6 right here with this molecule. And so that leaves that we'd need 12 here. So in order to make that balance, we need a six to make that balance. Um, and now that reaction is balanced. So there you see it written out typed. Um, this reaction is the combustion of sugar. So C6H12O6 is glucose. This reaction goes on in your body and fuels your body. Oxidation reduction or redox reactions are where elements change charge. 
reactions where electrons are transferred. So you can think of the electrons moving from one element to another. And a lot of the categories, most of the single replacement um, and decomposition are also redox and combustion and um, single replacement are also uh, redox reactions. So a whole bunch of the reaction types fall into this category. And batteries use the redox reaction. So every battery has a redox reaction. And what it's doing is capturing the electrons and using that movement of electrons. Movement of electrons is electricity. And so that's what's going on in batteries. So let's just look at an example. There's no test questions on redox, but it comes up. And especially if you're studying health, redox reactions are important in biological systems. So let's look a little bit at how this works. So when you have an element by itself, it has no charge. And so that's why we give it a charge or an oxidation number of zero. So magnesium starts out at zero. And we're going to react it with HCl. And oxidation number is very often just the charge. So the H is plus, the Cl is minus. Then on the product side, now magnesium is with the chloride. So magnesium is now plus 2, chloride is still minus 1. And the hydrogen now is by itself, so it has a charge of 0. And so you can see what's changed is the magnesium went from 0 to plus 2, and the hydrogen went from plus 1 down to 0. So 1 went up. Magnesium went up in charge, it was oxidized. Hydrogen went down, and it was reduced. And it always has to happen together. The electrons flow from one thing to another. Um, and so that's an oxidation reduction, where you have a change of charge. Single replacement is always an, a redox reaction. 